Now it's time that we set up our static files. And static files are CSS, JavaScript, and images. Typically on a project, your static files will not be coming from the same place that your Django project is coming. That means that you'll use two separate servers for your Django project and your static files. That of course is in production. When we're testing it, they can be kind of run from the same thing, but they won't be long-term. Again, they'll be separated. If you look at codingforentrepreneurs.com, what is actually serving the Django project is heroku.com. And then what's actually serving the static files, again, CSS, JavaScript, or images, that is coming from Amazon Web Services S3. So what we're gonna be doing now is actually setting it up locally so we can test it and actually show our static files. So if you look at the documentation under docs.djangoproject.com slash en slash the version number, in this case 1.9, how to static files, you'll actually go here. This is also located at the very bottom of the settings file. Of course, if you're following along with 1.9, you will see this link, so you can copy that link directly. And this will actually show you all the different things about static files. You can read more about it if you'd like. Um, of course, we're gonna be implementing it ourselves and making sure that it works correctly on our development server. Um, now, the important thing to note here, again, what we're gonna be doing here is gonna be working for your local development environment. It's not gonna be for production. That is, it's not gonna be good for live usage, but we're gonna put in some safeguards to make sure that you don't do it. And as well, Django also has safeguards to make sure you don't do it as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this static files dirs part, and we're gonna paste it right underneath the static URL inside of our settings.py file. Um, so what we see here is ospath.join and it's taking the base directory and a new folder called static and then it just has another basically like path to a static folder which we don't actually have. Um, so basically what it's saying here is you can either take the ospath version or you can hard code it. Um, like what we talked about with templates uh, before we want to actually use the ospath version that's the best way to do it. And I'm gonna leave it just as the Django documentation has. Um, there are other ways on what you would do for this specific static file stuff, um, but for us, we're just gonna leave it right in there. So I'm gonna save it and go back into the documentation a little bit and see that we see this serving static files during development. So this is one of those things that we actually are gonna to wanna to add. And that is in our URLs, we want to actually show our static files or at least display these static files in some form. So I'm gonna go ahead and import a few things into our urls.py file. So our main urls.py. And we're gonna do from django.conf import settings. And then we also wanna import static. So from django.urls.static import static. And we'll do if settings.debug. So if debug is on true, which in our settings, that's gonna be this right here, which as it says, security warning, don't run debug on in production. So that's a safeguard for us in our URLs. We'll do URL patterns plus equals to, and then all of this stuff right here. And the reason I'm doing it like this versus what they have in the documentation is only to check the settings debug. So I don't have to worry or think about my urls.py file later when I actually bring it online. Um, so now what we've got here is the static files. It's taking the static URL and then the static root. Well, we didn't actually set the static root. And if we go into our settings, we don't see it anywhere. I'm gonna leave it blank for now to see if it even works and how it may work. So now that we have the settings set up and our URL set up, we're gonna do a call called collect static. I'll do python manage.py collect static. And it gives us this error, we don't have the static root setting set up, right? So collect static is basically like as if we had a server where all of our static files are gonna be in one place. Um, it's gonna make a lot more sense once we actually put it into action. Um, so now what I wanna do is create that static um, root location. So static root equals to os path.join. And again, I'll do baster, and then, then I'll say static CDN. And static CDN is really just saying static CDN as in a content delivery network, like as if we were emulating our static files being on a different server. Um, now, what we have here is we're putting it in the base directory. That is the directory where the Django project is. If you remember back, baster is where manage.py lives. We don't want it there. We actually want it 
and we will put it in the base of our virtual environment, which is one folder up from our Django project. So to change that, all we do here is os.path.durname. And what that does is gets the directory name one up from our Django project. And then it's gonna look for something called static CDN. So now that we have that set, um, we can run collect static again. And we'll say yes. And then it says no such file or directory, right? Uh, notice where it's actually trying to send it. It's trying to send it to static CDN in the virtual environment, exactly where we wanted it to go. Um, so inside of the virtual environment, let's make a new folder in here. And we're going to call it static underscore CDN. Again, as you see down here, press enter. And we created it now. So let's try that call one more time by pressing up, press enter, say yes. And it's saying source.static is now not there. So try Django 1.9 SRC static. So this is not there. So let's go ahead and create that. As you would see with all these folders, there, that other one's not there. So we'll put static. And now it's there. Let's try it one more time. Collect static. Say yes. Boom. All this stuff was added. So it's saying that 55 files were copied to the static CDN. Now what we see here is inside of our static folder, inside of the virtual environment is empty, but the static CDN is no longer empty. It says admin. So admin is related to the admin, the Django admin itself. So everything related, including fonts, all the static files are now in the static CDN or at least our development version of it. So it's, it's basically just separating these two things out. The local or the project static files, so any of the static files we want, we would just put them directly in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new folder for that. And I'll say um, base.css, or excuse me, we wanna rename that to just CSS. And we're gonna put inside of CSS, we'll call a new file called base.css. And I'm just gonna do h1, and we'll say color is gonna be like a gray color. So 777. Okay, so now that we've got that, We've created some static files. We're gonna do python manage.py, collect static. We're gonna add them into our static CDN and we'll say yes and it brings it over and it goes from the static inside of our project into our static CDN. So it's like sending it to the server in a way. It's emulating that. Now, if you had Amazon Web Services set up, the S3 part of it, it would actually send it there. And that's something we cover on codingforentrepreneurs.com. So if you, now that we have this new base CSS, we can actually add it into our template. So if we go into base.html, inside of head, we can actually link it in. So link real equals to style sheet and the href is equal to static slash CSS. I'm gonna hard code it out first and then base.css. And then we can close that off. We save that. Let's run the server again. And we will go into our project, we refresh. Doesn't seem like anything's coming through here. So let's go back and we'll go to inspect element. And we're gonna go into the console, or excuse me, the head here. So we should see the style sheet of static css.base. We'll open it up in a new tab. And the, oh, here's the problem right there is dot h1, not h1. So um, the CSS is coming through, it's actually being um, rendered, it's showing up, and that would be true with the admin stuff as well. So let's change the CSS to the right call, which is just h1, not dot h1. So python manage.py collect static again, say yes. It copied it, it changed the one file that was in there. We refresh in here and now it says h1 there. We refresh there and now our styles are coming through and they're gray. Um, so that's actually setting up our static files. There's one more thing that I might wanna add and I'm going to just because it's something that I'll need to do later and that's called media root. So I'm gonna copy static root and put it right next to it and call this media root and I'll just call it media CDN. So what media root is, is it has to do with um, any files that are uploaded from the user. So if your users upload an image, that's where it's gonna go. It's gonna go into your media root by default. Um, there are ways to change it, but that's not something we're gonna cover. So we're gonna make that new folder called media CDN. It's gonna be, so now we have in our virtual environment, we have media CDN, SRC, and static CDN. 
Um, so that's all we really need to do as far as setting up our static files. The one last thing that I want to show you is how you would load this dynamically. And it's not by spelling out static slash CSS slash base dot CSS, because if we ever wanted to change our static URL, this would break, right? So all we have to do here is add in at the very top, load static files. And then it, and down here, we just add this static template tag. So static, and it's, we're going to do double quotes. So the opposite of what's outside of it. And we're going to do a relative import there. So that is how you would do it right there. Save that. We refresh, it's still loading there. It's still loading there, as we see here. So if we change that static root, so just like what we've seen with other URLs, I'll say static ABC here, and we refresh, it still says static ABC. So that's important for, especially if you use something like Amazon Web Services or anything else that, that might need the URL to change for your static files. And going back in here, this is also true for images, right? So if I had an image, I would just do image and then image dot, like let's say beach dot JPEG. And I would do image source equals to that static. That's essentially how you would do that specifically. Uh, that's something we'll come back to. Now, if you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, in the next one, we're going to implement a front end framework to make this stuff look a lot better. So we will see you in the next one.